Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I am Dr. Boyd Boozer, and I am a clinical professor at the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine, and I'm also an officer of the Board of Directors of the Osteopathic International Alliance. I would like to thank the World Traditional Medical Forum and the conference organizers for the opportunity to present to you here today. I have no conflicts to disclose. In this talk, I will present a brief history of the osteopathic profession, discuss the organization of the profession, give an overview of regulation and educational standards, and comment on efficacy and safety. Osteopathy was developed by Andrew Taylor Still, a physician and surgeon in the United States of America in the late 1800s, who was dissatisfied with the then current state of medical care. He experienced a number of life-changing events, including the death of several of his children from meningitis, and also his service as a hospital steward in the US Civil War. These and other experiences led him to develop the tenets of osteopathy with the aim to improve upon the practice of medicine and surgery and to place it on, quote, a more rational scientific basis, unquote. He ultimately established the first independent school of osteopathy in 1892 in the state of Missouri. The first school of osteopathy outside the US was established in London, England in 1915 by one of Dr. Still's former students, Dr. J. Martin Littlejohn. Since then, the profession has developed along two distinct practice models, sharing the same principles and philosophical approach. Around the world today, there are two related professions providing osteopathic health care. There are osteopathic physicians providing osteopathic medicine and osteopaths providing osteopathy. In the USA, the osteopathic profession developed in parallel to Western or allopathic medicine. Doctors of osteopathic medicine have a medical degree qualification and postdoctoral training that enables them to practice as licensed medical physicians and surgeons in all 50 states. The standard medical curriculum also includes comprehensive training in osteopathic principles and osteopathic manipulative treatment. They are educated in accredited colleges of osteopathic medicine in both public and private universities and complete their postdoctoral training, their residencies and fellowships in the same hospitals as their MD colleagues. US trained osteopathic physicians can currently obtain a license to practice as medical physicians in 57 countries. In most countries outside the USA where osteopathy is regulated, the osteopathic professional's scope of practice normally does not include prescribing of medicines or performance of surgery. These professionals are typically referred to as osteopaths as opposed to osteopathic physicians. However, it should also be noted that in a number of European countries, there are educational programs for medical physicians to obtain formal postdoctoral training in osteopathy and to practice medicine in an osteopathic specialty framework. Osteopathy is a person-centered rather than disease-centered approach to the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of illness and injury. Osteopathic professionals, both osteopathic physicians and osteopaths, use their understanding of the relationship between structure and function to optimize the body's self-regulating, self-healing capabilities. This approach to patient care and healing is based on the concept that a human being 
is a dynamic functional unit in which all parts and all body systems are interrelated. It emphasizes the influence of the somatic body framework system in health and disease and interprets that influence on the functions of the respiratory, circulatory, neurologic, and metabolic systems. One essential component of osteopathic healthcare is osteopathic manual therapy, typically called osteopathic manipulative treatment, which refers to a wide array of manual techniques that may be combined with other treatments or advice, for example, on diet, physical activity and posture or counseling. The practice of osteopathy and osteopathic medicine is distinct from other healthcare professions that utilize manual techniques, such as physiotherapy or chiropractic, despite some overlap in the techniques and interventions employed. Osteopathy is currently practiced in at least 46 countries throughout the world. In some countries, manual therapists use osteopathic techniques and claim to provide osteopathic treatment, although they may not have received proper training. The Osteopathic International Alliance is the only worldwide organization of osteopathic healthcare professionals. The OIA was admitted into official relations with the WHO in 2018, and this recognition was renewed in 2021. The Osteopathic International Alliance is an organization of organizations, and its member organizations include professional associations, regulatory authorities, and educational institutions. Currently, there are 72 member organizations in 21 countries. The OIA is headquartered in the USA in Chicago, Illinois. The OIA envisions a world in which every person has access to high quality osteopathic health care. And the mission of the OIA is to encourage systems of education and regulation that will ensure high standards for safe and effective health care from osteopaths and osteopathic physicians. The OIA's agreement with WHO encompasses three projects. Project one is production and updating of a global report on osteopathic health care. Project two is updating the WHO benchmarks for training in osteopathy published by the WHO in 2010. And project three is creation of an international glossary of osteopathic terms. Osteopathy and osteopathic medicine are rapidly growing professions. There are an estimated 200,000 clinicians delivering osteopathic health care worldwide in at least 46 countries. There are approximately 120,000 registered osteopathic physicians and physicians with formal postdoctoral training in osteopathy. There are nearly 80,000 osteopaths. Of these, over 45,000 are statutorily regulated and registered osteopaths. And, and there are an estimated 35,000 osteopaths who are not statutorily regulated and registered but may be registered with voluntary registering organizations. Osteopaths are statutorily recognized as healthcare professionals and regulated by law in 13 countries. These are the countries with the most. There are pending laws recognizing and regulating osteopathy in several additional European countries. Osteopathy is practiced, but not recognized or regulated by law in 22 countries where registration is voluntary. These are the countries with the most. 
Osteopathic physicians are statutorily regulated in over 20 countries. These are the countries with the most. In the US, doctors of osteopathic medicine comprise approximately 11% of all physicians, but that percentage is rapidly growing. In fact, 25% of all medical students in the US today are attending a College of Osteopathic Medicine. Turning now to educational standards, we will discuss standards for both osteopaths and osteopathic physicians. For osteopaths, in most countries where osteopathy is regulated by law, the minimum educational requirement for practice varies by country but is normally either a bachelor's or master's degree. There are two commonly cited and recommended documents for establishing educational standards in countries seeking to establish regulation of osteopathic professionals and practice. These are the previously mentioned WHO benchmarks for training in osteopathy and the CEN European Standard, which was published in 2015. Both the WHO benchmarks and the CEN standards describe type one and type two programs. Type one is for those individuals with little or no prior healthcare training, but who have completed high school education or its equivalent. The recommended length of training is four years full time, normally comprising at least 4,000 hours, including at least 1,000 hours of supervised clinical practice. Type two is aimed at those with prior training as healthcare professionals. These programs have the same content and aims as type one but the course content and length may be modified based on the prior experience and training of the individual applicant. In the USA, the minimum requirement for osteopathic physician education is a four-year doctoral degree from a fully accredited college or university with a bachelor's degree or higher as a prerequisite for admission and completion of an accredited residency program of three or more years, depending on the specialty. In all countries where osteopathy and or osteopathic medicine are regulated by law, and in many where it is not, continuing professional development is an obligatory requirement for continued registration and licensure, which is evaluated and or monitored. The specific requirements vary by country. The evidence for effectiveness of manual therapies is growing and becoming more robust. There is moderate and strong evidence for pain relief and improving function in low back, neck, shoulder disorders, and headaches. There is growing positive evidence base of beneficial effects for hip and knee osteoarthritis, heel pain, length of hospital stay in preterm infants, irritable bowel syndrome, lymphatic drainage as part of breast cancer care, and infantile colic. Tables of evidence and extensive references may be found in the OIA's global report available at the URL shown on this slide. In conclusion, osteopathy and osteopathic medicine are rapidly growing professions. Educational standards are commonly recognized. Regulation of osteopathy and osteopathic medicine as distinct health care professions is important for the health and safety of patients worldwide. For more information regarding osteopathy 
and osteopathic medicine, please see www.oialliance.org. I would like to thank you for your attention and hope you are all staying healthy and happy. Thank you again and have a good day.